Okay, so um, today is chapter 12 and we're at halfway point now. Oh, is that? Hmm. Yeah, it's 25 chapters total. Uh, so today's 12. And um, so today's chapter is about uh, Krishna's home or at home with Krishna. Krishna at home, that's it. So he's hanging out, Afra is hanging out with Krishna, hanging out in the house, checking out the house, checking out how the house is designed and it makes me go, I want to go for a visit. <laughs> so definitely something I would like to do someday. Um, and so they get to have some conversation. I really enjoy the banter where Krishna is kind of making fun or I feel like he's kind of embracing his Egyptian nature with some of the jokes he's making about, you know, um, his Egyptian background. I kind of really like that. It was, it was a nice, um, yeah, conversation. So a couple of points came up for me in that chapter. Um, the chapter of equipment of people on earth that could become equipments that is carefully prepared for to receive certain information and knowledge from you know our spirit friends who have now learned a lot of things that we want to learn more about. That has always been an interest for me because I've been teaching intuition since I was 30, 20 years now. It's always been a big passion for me about developing intuition itself. Um, so, and it was true teaching intuition that I started receiving some divine truth principles to begin with, to prepare me to someday be able to recognize divine truth teachings as truth. Um, so I'm very, very fascinated with this topic. Where are you guys at with your feelings about being, being a receiver of information? How do you guys feel? Um, I guess, yeah, I've kind of mixed feelings. I have some feelings of not being good enough to receive. Um, like sometimes I question how clearly I receive it. So yeah. while I feel I can receive information, I often feel like, oh, am I receiving it exactly how they've said yeah. it or am I using my injuries to modify it. Um, True. That comes up. Okay. But you do have a, a desire for it. You do want to. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, Virginia? I totally agree with what you're saying. That um, with Karen saying about, I, as soon as you talk about anything like that, I kind of just I I just get so curious about it. I I've always wanted to learn more, okay. um, and then sometimes I I get upset I get upset about it and get sad about it because it's like I feel like I'm either I'm not tuning in well enough, I'm not hearing. Okay, you know I'm not I'm not uh, following as you know, my guidance is there and then I'm not tuning in to it enough. Okay. And I keep feeling like I'm going to keep missing out. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm going to miss out because, you know, how do I, how do I do this better? Okay. How can I be a, a, that instrument? How can I be a better instrument? Okay. Or is it, and then I think, well, if maybe it's my emotional injuries and, and you know, how I've lived my life and my upbringing that is creating these blocks. Um, right. Because I keep hearing that it's there for you. Yeah. It's there forever. It, it's available, right? Yes. And if you desire it, that I should be able to access it. Yeah. So then I get confused about it. So why am I not getting it? You know? Okay. And then, yeah. Right. So there's this belief system we have that you either have it or you don't. And not that this is something you have to develop and tweak over time again and again and again. Like we have this feeling because we have the, the psychics that are popular in society seem to just have it. 
it's a tap, you turn it on and off you go. And it's like, no, it's very, very careful preparation from what we're reading in the chapters. There's so much preparation, so much work being put into, like, look at how carefully they're caring for the children. How much work is put into the education of the children? Step by step by step. And then every step of the way, you're actually then also activating but respecting the child's free will. So same goes for us. Maybe we're being very carefully uh, and gently and respectfully prepared to do certain function. And it's been going over very, like if I look back at my own development, I'm, I admire how carefully and systematically I was being trained step by step by step. They, they have spent decades preparing me carefully and slowly. So there's a lot of care put into it. So that would be one of your blocks, Virginia, that uh, you're supposed to develop it. But then there are a couple of other things that are coming up in our conversation that we can go into. Um, Selena. <laughs> Um, for me, it's just, I'm just afraid. I'm afraid of the expectation oh. of performance. If, if yes. They, yes. Which I know is dumb. Well, dumb. like no. I, I know, I know that they, that I will love it when I get it, but I had this big fear of, oh, now I can do this thing. And, and now I have to be something <laughs> with this, yes. you know, that I'm afraid of that. Yeah. That I, the, the expectation. It's actually been a turn off for me. I've actually been turned off because I'm, I don't care if I'm clairvoyant. I don't want to be one. I don't care if I could receive information about exactly what you're, the one who passed was thinking about two weeks before he died, just so I can convince you that I got the real thing. I don't want it. Like I actually get turned off by this very idea that if you're a real psychic, then you'll be able to get this and that information and you will know what my house looked like when I was five years old or some other, you know, what was the color of my favorite crayon or whatever, I don't know. Um, but that turns me off. And, it, and I think, but that creates the expectation that that's what psychics are supposed to be like. And if that's the expectation, no thanks, I don't want the job. So that, that would be, and again, that's a really good point. Somebody comes to you for a reading they're expecting to get their addiction met when you as a medium are giving a gift of what you are receiving, which may not be what they are expecting. So then there is that kind of like a power struggle almost that what I'm receiving is this, it's probably not what you're looking for. So if you have addiction or wanting to please people, then you're going to be, um, you're going to think that you're not doing it right or that you're not receiving information or it's about performance. Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Yeah, okay. Um, and then, and of course the feeling of um, how clear is our information that we're getting is probably where the work is, how to become a better channel, how to be clearer. Uh, in receiving information is probably kind of like an ongoing, you're constantly purifying and cleaning. And But then if you want to wait until you become pure and then receive information, you're not, that's not, I think that doesn't work that way. You have to develop and practice and develop and practice and along the way, purify, purify, purify. And then the whole thing comes together at the same time. It's probably how it works. So we can't wait to become pure to practice mediumship. That's what I'm thinking. Um, Virginia? I, I feel like that's, I feel that's definitely true for me. Okay. But, and maybe for a lot of people. And I, I did hear Jesus say that in one of his talks um, that you don't have to be perfect in love to be able to expand in love oh nice right like wow yeah and, and i've had this this thing that um i'm not there yet i'm not there yet so yes. that's why you know i need to be in better condition in order to be helping people more yeah and i'm really trying to figure out how to 
get me past that part of that you can be of service yeah if you have that desire yeah um even if you are not in a perfect soul yes well at the beginning of our book discussion when we when i received that recording from mary um the mess the message i got from that was what i'm exploring now is that if you're in humility, if you're feeling your own emotions, somehow it works out right, or the best outcome is possible. So that's the piece that I'm curious about to see if, if that's all you need to be doing. Stay in your own emotion, being honest with yourself, being in humility um, is enough. I mean, being in humility is in itself an accomplishment. Uh, but that that somehow minimizes the risk or bring the best outcome possible. But then unless you engage it, you're not going to get there. You're not going to get to perfection. You're not going to get to um, the place of being a good medium. Like it just, yeah. Okay. Um, so Michael, do you wish to add some comments here? Nope. Okay. So unless he's, oh. Hey, Darm. I'm muted and I have to get off of mute. Um, hold. Yes, I do have some comments. I was in a line of people. Okay. Um, mediumship is what drew me into divine truth. It, oh. I found the stuff that Paget received was fascinating. Yeah. I'm not a, I'm not a medium. I'm not psychic. I'm mediumistic. Yeah. And it just seems like there are some people who can do it and some people who can't, and most people can't. And, it, and so I agree with what one of the other people said that it should be desire. And then, but desire, but, but like I'm learning from the book, you have to learn, you have to develop. Yes. And I know that I, and what you said about a gift an expectation pertains to me because I want to be liked. Yes. Um, and I especially want women to like me. Yeah. Um, and I, I don't want to really know personal truth about myself. Um, <laughs> yes. Jesus, Jesus told me that. Yeah. So I have, so in the process of this wanting to be, to develop into a medium somehow, yeah. I'm learning I have blocks to it. And it's, it's um, kind of frustrating and disappointing. And I would really rather that I didn't have the blocks and it was all easy, yeah. but I just have to accept what the process is and try to figure it out. Okay. That's all. Okay, thank you. Well, I believe everyone can be medium sick. Mm, it's something that I've always stood by for my whole career in teaching intuition. Um, and actually in my practice too. So I know I get pretty passionate about what do you mean you're not meeting mistake? So I love seeing when that penny drops for people and, and they start to develop that um, or awaken, I would call it awaken that connection. So, okay. I think it really helps to narrow down what you wish to learn more about. And it has to be, we have this feeling of wanting to serve the world and what is it the world need and how can I best serve? But when it comes to intuition, it has to be something that you're really personally excited about. And turns out that is also what you are here to serve. So it turns out to be the same thing. So if you could be selfish personally and go, well, if I could have somebody, a guide that could sit here in front of me and look like a person that I can touch and feel and talk to. What would I want to now learn about? Imagine I'm the one in a preschool and I'm walking along the garden. I see this and that and this and that and I have all these questions coming up and I get to ask somebody, what would it be for you? What would you like to learn more about? And be as specific as you can.
Virginia? I have a passion for and a desire to help people heal. Okay. And heal themselves. Okay. Um, through yoga and through energy healing. Okay. And I've really wanted to be able to have, be more in tuned with the emotional aspects to be able to help people through that. Okay. So do you want like, to see how emotions create the health condition? Do you want to see how emotions can help heal it? Do you want to see how you can help with the emotional? Where's the question? Which part are you at? Which, which one do you want to start with? Being able to either feel or see their, their causal emotion see? to help them so that, they, so that they can choose whether they want to work further to heal themselves or not. Well, right? It's their it's choice. But... Stay with the fun. It's like, ooh, it'd be so much fun to see the emotion in them. Isn't it fun? Yeah, I think yeah. so. Whether that shows up as a color or that, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, I would just really like to do that. Yeah. So start with that. It's like, you know, yeah, like there are a lot of things I want to see happening with our patient that they don't care or need to know. But I want because it's fun for me. I want to see it. I want to see what, how's God helping this person? What's God doing for this person? Where is the stack? What's going on? What's the block? Oh, I just got a flash of a memory. Blah, blah, blah. So many things are going on because it's fun for me. <laughs> and then, and usually the person will drop into emotion without me having to say anything. And I'm like, oh, well, carry on. <laughs> You're good. <laughs> so, okay. Um, so it's have, be in the fun. It's fun to be able to see the emotion that they're stuck in. Is that something you're interested in? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, absolutely. I just, yeah, I would love to be able to do that for people. Yeah. Okay. Well, do it for yourself because you want to see it. Okay. I want to see it. It will be, and then, and trust that you're liking that and you being excited by that is part of your development as a healer. Trust that. Because you'll have the, the passion and then you start to see, they'll start to show you, however they show you, um, what's going on. And that will then trigger the next question. Well, then how, how was it created? Or why are they blocked? Or how do we bring it to the attention? Or the next question will then trigger the next journey. Just start with that one, because it's fun. You want to know. Okay, I'll give it a go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because narrow it down. I'm excited now, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, and then you're going to have the experience like Karen mentioned, how do I know if it's accurate? How do I know where this is coming from? Uh, is my emotional condition um, filtering or influencing the message? Am I missing something? That's part of the journey. That's just something that's just going to have to keep getting tweaked step by step by step. But if you think it's fine and you really want to know, you're going to forget that you don't feel worthy. <laughs> you really want to know what you want to know. You're not going to care that you just spoke to, you know, like celestial spirits or God just gave you some feelings to answer. Like you forgot that you're supposed to feel unworthy. That's what I found. Desire can really help with that. Okay. Um, others, what would it be for you? Karen. Hmm. Oh, there we go. Sorry, now <laughs> mute wouldn't come off. Um, yeah, I'm kind of struggling a bit with this question. I'm, feeling about it because I feel like our guides are just like anybody else and so I'm thinking about what am I already asking about what am I already yeah that's feeling right. about because if I'm not already doing it do I really have a desire to know, to know it yes. um so because when I think about just kind of intellectually I think oh there's loads of things I want to know about yeah. how the spirit world works how God's laws work things yeah. about myself but I'm like am I asking that already because I'm not asking, yes. do I really have a desire okay. to know it? So, okay. yeah, I'm getting a bit 
in okay. these towns. Yeah. Um, mm. So what I do with some of that is I'll actually write down a whole list of questions, which is something I've done in mediumship, right? Like I'll actually start making a whole list of questions up to like 20 questions. I write down the questions first, like question about how does spirit world work? Hmm. What kind of questions could I be asking about that? So you start breaking down all the steps after steps after steps of mm. question after question after question after question. Um, and then start receiving answers. Mm. So sometimes Which would then build more yeah, desire. Yeah. If you want to receive an answer about something, then it poses another oh, question. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. But, and I felt like the, this chapter um, was really focusing on the desire for truth. The yes. more desire for truth you have, yeah. then the clearer medium. Yeah. And I feel then you can receive a whole host of subjects, yes. not necessarily just ones that you are really passionate about. The, yes. the more desire for truth and God. And, and I, I think this idea of rapport, like the more yes. desire you have yes. for a certain subject, then you're going to attract those types of yeah. spirits. And, and But I feel like because we're still developing, they seem to be really focusing their in, information on instrument. Every specific thing has a specific instrument. Um, all channels of communication are limited by purpose and capacity. And it's... Um, it, do you interpret, I interpreted the instrument to be us. Yes. Is that what you mean? Yes. Yes. If I'm the instrument, uh, and I'm, say, a piano, then I can only receive a pianist sending me that particular message. So I feel like if I can just hone down on what is the instrument I am, and that it's okay that I can only receive a certain type, narrow it down, ask very specific question, receive, 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 so that I can identify what kind of instrument I am, which I'm assuming my desire is kind of a hint <laughs> at the instrument. <laughs> and yeah. that um, and that the purification is about asking for truth. Asking for truth about the topic is how the mm. instrument can get purified, absolutely. Um, but there is something about recognizing your soul quality having a very specific essence of flavor, which then suggests the kind of instrument you are able to be. Like for you, Karen, you love systems. You love structures. Yeah. Um, I don't. I guess I kind, of, yeah. I kind of interpret it a bit differently. Like I feel like, yeah, if you have a certain passion for yeah. something like music or something, then you're going to attract spirits that will, you'll form a better rapport with them and you can channel that information more easily. But I also feel that if you focus on God and yes. like the universal laws, then you can, I feel it just winds everything up. You can Absolutely. then receive a whole heap of topics and information. Absolutely. Um, not just the thing that you're most passionate, like Absolutely. that you have a passion about. But I feel that even then it's because you're passionate about more topic. You're passionate about more truth about the same topic. I think the passion mm -hmm. because of the free will is, mm -hmm. is you opening your door to receive. And there's something in intuition I've learned so far, which is it's about asking the question. You got to have the question. You got to want to yes. ask the thing. It's driven by questions. That's where I'm at right now in my development. It's about me deciding ahead of time what my questions are. And then once I start to channel, then I'm just receiving, 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 receiving. I don't question how accurate it is or not accurate. Like I just get in the flow and just keep going, just keep it moving, just keep practicing the instrument. And then over time, it will get purified. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Like I started with usually only asking four questions and now it's like going to like 15, 16 questions and I just keep going through them. Yeah, mm. that's pretty good. So that's a really good question. It's like, there's a desire of, well, I want to know everything. And it's like, well, first, first develop the instrument. And then once the instrument is going, you can ask about anything.
Mm. There was a time when I would receive information. It was really interesting, right from the get-go, people would come to me for expecting you know, information about health, but I would only get information about their emotional blocks without knowing about divine truth. I only get emotional block and I'm like, uh, I'm telling you what you need to do to deal with whatever it is you're already dealing with, uh, but I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what your health problem is. I'm not getting that information. But at some point people start asking me, can you see auras? Can you see colors? And I go, I don't know, why don't I ask? Can you show me colors? And boom, I started to see colors. So it was like, once the instrument was developed, then you can go ahead and pick. I'm like, it's not very useful for me to see colors, but yeah, I guess I can. I can see chakras. Okay. I don't know why. I still want to go back to what I'm getting, which is more accurate, but I can. So once you develop one by developing a very specific focus, then you can use the same for. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Selena, what would yours be if you could pick? Oh, it's such a hard question for me. Yeah. Um, well, uh, hmm. this just feels like just a, a developmental, like I get lots of intuitions, feelings about people. Yeah. And it's knowing where, what to say, what not to say, how can I help them? How, what I don't want to, like, is it right for me to explode their life? <laughs> Okay. you know yeah uh, is that lovey I, I can't tell yeah. i can't like i don't have any sensitivity to that like what's yeah. the right thing to say what's how much to say because okay. sometimes i have exploded lives and and yeah. and i go wow that doesn't feel very loving and although i really i know that's truth like the truth i know it's truthful yeah it didn't it especially if they're people like they're not divine truth people. Yeah. You know? And, and like they like, for instance, people I've harmed don't even want to hear what you've done and, and how, how that's affected them. And yeah. they don't even want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you were good. You were good. No, no, I wasn't. I wasn't, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, like even that's upsetting. So it's being sensitive to how do you give people truth that, you're just you're positive it will help them but yet they can't it's, it's like i don't feel like i deliver it well or something so i'm trying to come up with a couple of questions or prayers that you can ask that i try to use to keep because i have addiction for power and superiority so i tend to over right i'm trying to dominate so i always have to kind of try to come up with prayers to kind of keep me in check while i work out all these addictions um so some prayers, and if you guys want to jump in with some that you feel will create that sense of boundary for yourself when you're like a bull in a china shop. Um, so some is I have asked, God, if I were being humble right now, what would it, what would it look like? Yeah. <laughs> my favorite prayer right now. Well, uh, my choice, lately my prayer is, how can I make a more loving choice okay. in this? Especially I, uh, if I'm having a feeling, how can I... What's the loving choice I can make here? What's the loving choice I can make? Yeah, um, or show me my injury me. in it or something. Okay. Yeah. Um, also, sometimes you do end up doing the unloving thing, but that was part of the law of attraction to help you work it out. So that could still be a good thing. Michael! Oh, yay! Uh, and the other one is, God, what do you want to see happen here right now? To be in one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ask... Um, God, how are you loving this person right now? Yeah. I was guided to ask that prayer because that way you can see like there's all these things going on. And I'm like, why is nothing happening? No one's helping this person. And I get really upset. Yeah. But then I ask, God, how are you already helping this person right now? Um, yeah. And hone in or focus in on something that's already happening in their life for the purpose mm -hmm. to help them, then the conversation goes into bringing attention to that. So then they highlight that issue for themselves and start to engage with it more consciously. 
sometimes I ask, what's the right, what, what are some good questions I can ask them so that I'm not telling mm -hmm. them. I'm yeah, them. yeah. Like just having a softer approach, I tend to like say, just charge in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah. this is something for me that would be something just normal for me, yeah. and, and then you say it out loud, and it's like, what? Yeah, <laughs> why are you talking to me like that? Or you know, they're defensive, or they, I mean, and it is triggering them, and you know that, yeah. but they maybe don't yet have the tools to handle that, or know that that's beneficial. Or that I'm coming from my addiction, like I, I like to yeah. dominate, like that's that's a great. You know, that's not a nice addiction. That's pretty damaging. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's something to check. Yeah. And if yeah. you start asking all these prayers, then you can you can be developed and guided yeah. along with it. I, I think even for me, simple things, you know, I'm having dinner with people at, at like family and there's just so much spirit influence and stuff going on and children involved and all I can do is ball. Like I just have to cry and go to the bathroom and cry and i feel like even that's more information than anybody wants is that i'm really feeling so sensitive to what's going on and all the influence and everything and 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 it's like i threw a bomb in the room almost just because i feel it you know? well maybe you can even go into i would go into a tantrum at this point i would let myself mm -hmm. feel i really want to tell them what's going on like I just yeah. want to, I just want to shake them. So you're owning the desire, you're yeah. owning that motivation emotionally. Um, that can help you work through the addictive parts of it, so that yeah. you can see. Really yeah, is that that's where I'm, I'm trying to get some more sensitivity around. Is so I'm not actually moving forward with them instead of, yeah. you know, too much. Yeah. No, feel the desire. Let yeah. yourself realize that there's a desire here. I just want to tell them what's going on. I just want to tell them the truth. I can see it. <laughs> yeah. uh, and I have a, I'm an addiction yeah. to having, to being seen as authority. So I definitely oh, yeah. get into that. I am the authority here. So I let myself feel it emotionally so that it can get loosened a little bit. And it does mm -hmm. help. Okay. When I start to pray, oh yes, okay. So when I'm was becoming sensitive to my power addiction, I decided to stop giving feedback. So I just stepped back. Yeah. Just give them, I would give them questions or I would say, here are a couple of things that I think could be happening for you and let them choose what resonated as a way of challenging it. But then what I started to do was I would start pray, God, you give them truth. Because I don't want to say anything right now, it's coming from power. You give them truth so that I don't have to feel, it challenges my addiction. I didn't get to do anything for them. They received the truth themselves. They figured it out themselves during the session, which is very satisfying actually. And they start to feel trust and appreciation that they figured it out. So that's one prayer I like to do. God give them truth so that I can stay out of this conversation. Yeah. And it makes you really, like you really start tantruming going, but I didn't get the satisfaction. Uh-huh. Mm. <laughs> that's the addiction talking. So yeah, okay, good ones. Um, Michael, so if you could be um, able to receive, like you have a passion for like the pageant messages and if you could receive something like that, just having fun, just you on a hobby, just in the evenings, just jotting down some questions, no pressure to publish anything. What kind of questions would you like to ask? I think I would just like to feel that to sit down with a pen and paper and be able to get somebody's thoughts and and ha like the things that Paget was receiving he yeah. a lot of times he didn't know what was going to come. Oh yeah. So it would be a surprise it would be like lessons it would be like personal messages um okay. I haven't got specific desires maybe five or ten years ago i did you know nobler um i think i would just like to have to be able to do it and have a connection michael lots of judgments so why well um why can't um why can't a statement about how i feel be just a statement of truth and not a judgment 
Well, I'm feeling, I'm feeling empathy going out, Michael, you're judging okay. yourself. I feel like you're judging yourself. It feels harsh. Yeah, that's all. Um, <clears throat> so, so, but to answer your question, um, I, it's a hard one, like Selena, it's a hard one for me to answer. Yeah. Um, you know, I'd like to avoid things about myself and just learn things about the universe and, and fascinating and interesting things. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'd probably go that way. Yeah. So out of all the people that you've read about in the three books, do you have any particular people that you'd be interested to hear their thoughts about? Would you like to hear from Omra, from Kushna, from Afrar? <clears throat> Oh, in this, in the, in these books, I, I would pick Afrar. Afrar, okay, yeah. okay. So, so to say we come up with a hypothetical question, Afrar, I would like to know your thoughts about what? What are your thoughts about? Well, <laughs> Afrar, what am I lacking? Where am I messing up? So there's that Im implied judgment. But um, but he's Afra, probably, how could I do? But he'll answer that with love anyway. He he mm -hmm. will not, you know, like he'll give you truth anyway, and compassion anyway. So okay, so that's a good one. Afra, what are your thoughts on what I'm missing right now? Is that it? Right, right. Okay. But maybe um, we start with something to warm it up. Like, what are your thoughts about something fun in the spirit world or something going on in the world right now? What are we, because that creates trust in the rapport before you go into. Afra, what are some qualities that I have that are like yours that led you to become the person that you are that heaven unfolded for you in a loving and humble way? I love the question. Oh my God, that's so good. So good. That is a beautiful question. Beautiful. It would it would help me um, feel better about myself. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's a faith building question. That's beautiful. Okay. That see simple is stuff like that. That's how you develop. Just just this yeah. And before I could sit down and make 15 questions about addictions and go, okay, hit me with it. I would start qu asking questions like this, like um, what are some of my good qualities? Uh, okay, help me come to terms with my soul condition as it is, but let's balance it. What's the positive one? What's the negative one? You know, I would start asking and I'll start to receive answers that make me start trusting. Uh, I do have some good qualities and my guides do mean well. So now when I ask about addictions, it's the same people who means, you know, who still respect me because they see my other qualities. So that's a beautiful faith building, faith developing question, Michael. That's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And that is, that is how there are days when I go, I just want nice stuff today. Give me truth about something. And that's how I now, now have courage to ask about like, Okay, let's go to the hard stuff. And the beauty is that when I receive answers about the hard stuff, the way the answer is given in itself heals whatever the information is. I feel healed by the medium, the method, the language, the emotion through which the answer was given. Like how I'm being treated in itself has done more healing than whatever pain I think I would have felt from knowing the truth. That's lovely. Okay, thank you. Michael, you do always end up saying something that moves me. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Take some prodding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, okay, so um, there's some fun stuff then we can start by becoming an instrument uh, or wanting to be an instrument, but you know, keep it fun, keep it something you like. And uh, I'm, I'm very curious about the idea of, 
of the specificity and specialty. Like it's okay that we're specialized for a certain type of information and not others, or certain type of guides and not others. Um, it's okay. Maybe there's value to that. In fact, I feel it freeing that I don't have to be all thing to everyone. I'm not supposed to be the one that receive all information about the whole universe all in one go. God never intended it to be like that um, until maybe I get developed to some level. But at this point, I'm probably quite happy to just be me in my own eccentric way where I just like certain things and that's all it is. There's something freeing about it for me. Um, okay, so any further comments on this topic? I love this topic. Okay, get, better get me off it. So the second part was about how Kushna is helping the children. <clears throat> Uh, where he talked about how in rare instances, the taint of heredity demands an early isolation for more strict and guarded treatments. Um, justice does not punish one for the sin of another. The taint has been transmitted for the diseased soul of an ancestor. So the victim, the child is compensated and is isolated for greater care to prevent contagion. I. I really am like, what's he talking about? What are this taint that he's referring to? Um, what are your ideas about this? Karen. Um, my feeling was that it's just any kind of injuries from their parents or culture on earth, so things like racism or things like feeling they're superior or inferior okay. or things like that, yeah. that they've absorbed from their parents and that they're being isolated as not to pass that on to the other kids um, okay. until they... Okay, because children are kind of impressionable and they try to copy each other kind of thing, you mean? Like... Cool. Yeah, and just being around, like, because the children are so young they're going to absorb whatever is they're coming to contact with at that oh, that's age. A good point. I forgot about that that's right for some reason I'm thinking if you're in summer land somehow some rules don't apply like you're going to be absorbing emotion from your environment oh, I totally forgot thank you Karen that's right you know between zero and seven you're absorbing the environment emotion from your environment oh that's smart I get it now that's actually really good okay uh, and then more, can you expand more on that, Karen, or? Um, I think that, um, yeah, that was really, yeah, I just feel like, yeah, that some children have absorbed more injuries yeah. by the time they get there than other, probably depending on how long they've, yes. like how long it's been since they passed, obviously someone that's passed yeah. from an abortion really early has got less than somebody who was born and maybe died when they were one but yeah. um just even in the womb they would have been absorbing emotions from their mom and their dad and um I want yeah and depending on how severe those injuries are in do, the parents do you think that depending on how intense you are your your certain culture or your certain family line is that that would push in more emotions too like if if there's severe aggression in a certain family line that more gets dumped yeah. into the child versus someone that's gentler. I wonder if there's, a sense, if there's like a volume, like there's more intensity and therefore there's more strength. Well, maybe, maybe even something's repeated, like if somebody is in a culture, say where women are treated really inferiorly, like that they have to do all the work say it's still in some African tribal cultures that have those women do all work and things like that. So if they're, and then the, say the mother that's carrying that child has that feeling that they have to do everything, they're inferior to the male, and that's just constantly getting invited to the, say, a female child, that she's yeah. just not as good as males, Yeah. then um, I think it's more the repeated yeah, and it carries a different kind of strength or conviction if it's something that's been like 200 generation versus something that's only three generation. Hmm. And something that the, I think if the mother's feeling every day, 
Yes. Compared to something if she just feels once. Every now and then. Every now and then. Is it something oh, that's very okay. hard in the culture? Or, or say a culture which had slaves and they, or like a lot of servants or something and thought that other people should serve them or yeah. do what they want. That could get invited into the child. Okay. So the more well established and you no longer question the validity, the stronger it's going to be passed on, I think, is what you're suggesting here, which I can see, I can see the point of that. Okay, thank you. Um, Selena. What I really felt from that was how powerful it is, the ancestral, you know, the sins of the fathers, right. like he was talking about, how powerful it is that they actually have to be isolated. Right. That it's like, and we all have it. Not only do we have it, but we come, you know, we're born and we have our whole adult life and we're influenced by it even more in, in life because that parent is still there, still influencing us in that direction. So how- We're not recognizing the severity of- how No, we're, yeah. And, and yet but it, from their perspective, it's so severe that they can't even be with others. That's how big, it's like a taint, like the, even that word taint mm. is really- poison and you know it's really yeah i thought wow yeah we have no idea Whoa. how powerfully um affected we are and then if it's and then if it's a child like maybe a child's just aborted because it was inconvenient but to the mother but then if you add on that a cultural bias like chinese say the culture trying to eliminate too many children yeah and so this one got aborted because they already had a son and they didn't got pregnant by accident she was a girl so they definitely don't want her so there's yeah. just so many compounded things that can happen so yeah. i can yeah so that really i really felt that that yeah. how yeah how strong that is and how much sin it is that that they have to actually separate them until it's gone so i'm just thinking of for example i'm thinking of examples i'm like okay let's say there was a child who was conceived in a family that believed that you have the servants and then you have the masters. So I'm thinking, okay, let's say it was a boy that miscarried who believed that he is from the family of the owners and that he's waiting for people to serve him. So then I'm thinking, okay, will that child then be isolated because then that child's gonna go around expecting other kids to serve him? Going, okay, I gotta get that out. And now will he then contaminate the idea that well somebody's the master and somebody's the helper so then is that then going to get absorbed in other children like is that an example of isolation to help them remove it or could it be in a culture where you believe one gender is entitled to commit violence to another gender so then you got to isolate them because then this child is going to you know boink another kid um is that would that be the kind of situation where you think they'll be isolated so they can work it out yeah okay what are the kind of situation there could also be racial stuff too that if you have some racial ideas of like one race is can treat another race differently based on skin color then you got to isolate that huh. could it also apply to children that are on the receiving end you gotta isolate them because they feel they deserve it like would that be yeah karen what are you feeling there how would that affect the other children yes they would have a feeling of unworthiness and they're not good enough okay. and that the other children are better than them okay. and they would then be treating the other children like they're better oh. they're treating other people that they're better and that is also damaging. No, I didn't consider that. I was thinking only the aggressors will have to be removed, but then the one that... No, I think the inferior, Ooh. yeah, the people who are oppressed, similar thing. Okay. So they didn't go around treating other people they were, like they were better. They're superior, as if the kids are superior, and that will spread the idea around. Huh. Oh, yeah, I, there's a lot I got to think about about this. Okay. Virginia, did you raise your hand there or do you have some comments about this? It makes me feel that everyone has this, <laughs> right? We all do. Yeah, what Selena was pointing out there. We, right? all, we all have this, Ooh. right? Like, and it's unfortunate where there's 
no isolation, but we did have it this year. <laughs> yes, it's coming. Like, it just makes me think about um, how powerful that is and that that does not happen on earth. We're not isolated. And we quite often just carry it from one generation to the next. And how important it is, and it really makes me, me want to continue that what we're doing mm. and that we are aware of it mm. and that if we start healing these things in ourselves that we're not gonna pass it on to the next generation. Right. Because that doesn't happen on earth where there is this isolation as you're a child, you, it just gets more imposed on you. You yeah. know what I mean? Like we continue with it and we keep seeing it and then we impose it on our children until we become aware of it. True. And I just, it just really made me see like how powerful this is. Mm -hmm. And that if you make this decision, oh, sorry, just wants to keep going in there, um, that it's really not just about me. Yeah. I want to heal me. I want to make my life better for me. I want to be on this path, but wow, like this affects like, yeah, everyone. And I was thinking, does it affect, it does affect the previous generation as well. Okay. If yeah. I'm healing something, it's affecting future, but also the previous generations. That now have to be helped to release. I, I once once I start thinking about it, it just seems like it's it's big. Okay. I think that's probably why I shut it down. I think it's I don't want to feel overwhelmed with the immensity of what this means. So I just kind of go, what are you talking about? And it's like, I'll just get the group to help me out here. Um, okay. Uh, Michael, do you have some thoughts? With re with regard to your scenario about a child that uh, a servant and master feeling, I think I agree with whoever said it would be feelings of superiority, and I I think that I think I'm in the case of children. I think that probably all of us have feelings of distrust of not being loved and of distrust of our parent and distrust of God because it's a a handed down in common feeling but something that would be something like the superiority that would tend to be a projection towards other children and so i would think that feelings that are damaging might require a child to be isolated so it wouldn't hurt others um whereas all of us together need are, are learning that god is a loving parent and learning to overcome the original sin you know um, I think we could all be together for that. I like that. Okay, so the clarification, which is what Karen was pointing out too, is the projection. If you're going to project that other children, then that's going to require isolation. Because so the you don't damage them. The damage. Inferior or superior. Okay, that's a good distinction. Huh. Okay, thank you. And, and also, I think any child... We, we probably all have birth defects to some degree, even yeah. probably ADHD and autism could be considered a birth defect, but things that are, that carry all the way through to the physical body, I would say a prenatal child, the sooner that they could isolate it from the influence of the parent's emotions, mm -hmm. um, the less chance that it will, it will have a deformed body. Right which, which right. would be an unfair injustice towards it. Um, so I would well, see them being isolated from, well, I think I'm losing the track. I'm isolated from their parents. Parents' emotions. Okay. So some of the isolation we're speaking about is from the parents. But I think in the chapter, they're talking about, I'm assuming isolation from other children, but then it could be that you're actually isolating them from, in order to isolate them from parents and help them break it off, it's isolation period, not just because of their hereditary trait, but because they need to be healed. What I don't understand is when a child is conceived, does the, does the weight of the parent's emotion 
emotional injuries all get bestowed on the child at birth or is it something that that comes over time yeah um through the influence of the parent i wonder well i work with i work with pregnant women obviously um i I usually pray to have pregnant women come in here uh, because they're going through issues and they're getting riled up and they're getting emotional and it's such an opportunity to help them keep keep processing like pregnant women are very emotional because I believe is that the relative love that's in the child and their lack of in the parent creates that, that discrepancy and then it starts to trigger the mom's emotions so that you can start to process and release and therefore lessen the burden. So that's, there's an opportunity there. So that in itself would, because you know, pregnant parents, lots of fears get triggered, lots of questions, who am I? What kind of life am I creating for my kids? All these questions starts to get triggered, which then trigger emotions. And maybe maybe that's how the child is then getting helped because it lessens the, lessens the emotions being jumped. But then there's a good point. I don't know if everything gets flushed right at get-go or if it's over time. That's a good question. I don't know. Wow. Okay. Um, so I and it's a really good point that um, in Summerland there is so much attention being given to like that's the first thing you look for. You're looking for the hereditary trait and looking for like there's very specific plans and how to eliminate that. Like it's so important that you're watching out for it and creating treatment for it. Um, so if we were to create, cause I'm just thinking if in the future I ever adopt a foster kids then I'm thinking, okay, that's how I'm gonna have to work it out. I'm gonna have to pay attention to the absorbed inherited issues that I need to help the kid work out. Um, like how would I then design an environment in which that can be done? Like you're even kind of looking for it, not to judge the child, but to see it as something to remove. It changes the language in my brain because we usually go, oh, the kid has absorbed this from the parent and well, that's a done case. He's like his grandfather. And you know, we do that to children. And he's going to turn into his mother and oh well. Uh, but instead we're looking at it as something that we need to help the child remove. That's not part of the child's nature. Um, I used to receive some, some abuse as a child because I looked or behaved like a certain family member that was despised. And so then I got abused for it. Well, you're going to turn into so-and-so and it became a justification for abuse. When what this chapter is suggesting is you see it as something to remove. It's something separate from you, which creates an opportunity for healing. Um, Okay. Like how many of you growing up had felt, well, I'm like so-and-so uncle, or I'm like so-and-so grandfather. That's what I was told. So I'm doomed. I'm, I'm done for. You had some of those feelings growing up? Okay. That's good. (laughs) I did. Uh, Selena. Yeah, I was just gonna mention, I didn't, but my sister did. My mom constantly mm-hmm. referred to her as being like her, her sister yeah. that she said bad things about all the time. Mm. Yeah, she was very yeah. critical of her. So yeah, I don't, yeah, I, get, I get what you're saying, yeah. And so I wonder if the sister then feel like she's stuck or cursed because she's now stuck with this stiff, rigid character structure. That she yeah, can. yeah. And actually, as it turned out, we liked that aunt because she was actually very loving <laughs> to my mother, which was kind of a weird dynamic, you know, because my sister loved going to visit with her and stuff like that because she was so kind and loving. But yet, on the other hand, she was compared to her as not being good. Well, you ironically, know, the aunt that aunt I was compared to that was supposed to be a terrible person is the only person I've ever felt motherly love from now as an adult. I go and look for her. Um, connected with her and that's been my one positive uh, someone I'm actually now proud to be compared to so that's that's yeah. interesting yeah okay right. yeah okay yeah. Uh, I got a personal story there sorry um point three 
I like this statement, but I didn't get a chance to really think about it. Uh, the method of creation is not one of trying and repeating experiments until God attains success. He is perfect and his effort, first effort enveloped the potentiality of success. So basically, another statement is, all that has been, is, and will be was thus carefully planned, designed, and divinely concealed within a primal germ God sent forth to execute his will when he commanded. So I'm just thinking, okay, um, we are, are we also in some type of a summerland scenario where we are also our lesson plan to bring the best forth out of us is also at work. Like is somebody also watching out for us and our development as it is in children in Summerland because God does everything perfect the first time around. So what do you think that look like? How, what is this method God is probably using to attain success at the first go in our development and our success in order to become or accept uh, our divine heritage. Is that what that sound, is that what that sentence mean to you to begin with? Uh, I'm interested in some comments. Michael smiling. <laughs> Anyone comments? Michael, do you want to start? I think we, we're all created perfect and huh? um, everything we need for the success is already there. And then from what we've learned in assistance groups, um, God's created a universe that supports us and corrects us. Yeah. Um, and the, I think the, the goal of it is, I mean, at least as far as I've been can see is where Jesus and Mary are now, which is soul union and God union, but there's still individuals and growing. And so I, that's the evolution that I see referred to. Okay. So I think um, I think it's created, but created perfect, but we're not complete. We're not created. Okay. We have the experience of of learning learning about our, our free will and our desires and our decisions and choices okay. and how God's nature and all all through this. So it's we kind get, of all over, but what do you think? So we're getting an education in laws or education in how um, our parents have designed the universe in which we live. So that's what you're suggesting. Now, God is, all we need is already there, is what you said. That God has already created everything we need for our development. What do you think those are? What is that? Is it the laws, like law of attraction? Karen, do you have some ideas? Um, yeah, I do think the laws are a big part of it. I feel like the, that whole paragraph is the same, that God is perfect and he designed a perfect universe. Yeah. And how it says, um, you know, he is perfect and his first effort envelopes the potentiality of success like he's designed the universe so we will succeed yeah. um and i feel like every single thing in the universe is designed for that purpose everything yeah. i left not just the laws oh, but everything. right there <laughs> karen i feel like oh i could just dunk myself in going what's karen feeling there but it's quite lovely like that faith you seem to have there is like oh that's so lovely what are you feeling like how what is that yeah, I feel like he's just everything he's designed is to care for us and to help us. Okay. Like every, even the physical universe, like the trees, the um, plants, the sun, the gravity, the, you know, all the laws, everything, other people, like everything. And like we have guides to help us. Like there's just so much love in like everywhere in the universe that God's trying to help us. And 
but I feel like the paragraph saying he is per like he's designed it perfectly. Like he has this um there is no faults in it. And it's all designed to help us evolve. Like this idea of um so with the man the soul germ of an equally long succession is climbing up the slopes of evolution towards personality to follow after the generations who have crossed into paradise before them. Like it's this idea that we're all on this road to at one moment. Okay. Um, yeah. Well, what your comments are triggering for me is that you can see something I can't. And it's like, I think I need to choose to see it. I need to have a desire to go. How can I see the perfection that Karen is able to see? Like I'm missing out here. I'm, like if I could feel what you're feeling, that would really grow my faith. And it creates a lot of security. It creates a lot of openness to receiving and welcoming um, all, the, all the steps that God has created and sort of pushing against it, you know, like pushing against personal truth pushing against correction, pushing against, like instead of pushing against it, if I could see what you're seeing, I'll probably be like running towards it. That would really change my attitude quite a bit. But I think it comes with me wanting, I need to choose to see, like God show me those magnificent laws and perfection and which is now making me go, well, that's what happened when you're willing to see systems and structures, I guess. <laughs> So that's the gift of your, your gift, is that by seeing the system, you're able to appreciate the perfection. And mm, that's something I could, I could definitely um, benefit from. So it would be beautiful for me to want to see the perfection of the system. I can see how healing it will be for me, how much faith you'll grow. Yeah, wow, thank you. Okay, uh, other comments? Selena? I just love the this part, this primal germ. Okay. That he says, I just love that. To me, it says like, it's indestructible. No huh? matter what we do with our will, with our, as humans, doesn't matter. It's in us, this primal germ, it's everywhere. It's indestructible. Wow. Like, to, I don't know why that says that to me, but it does. It's just like, wow. it's indestructible. It's just simply cannot be altered, changed, okay. destroyed we can't do anything to it. It's there, it's in us, and it's just to find it. And oh, wow. Yeah, that's yeah, I like yeah, that. Everyone. Just kind of really says to me that God's really just got it. He's just in control, period. Okay. In control, right, right from the beginning of creation. He's always been. All, yeah. yeah. Does it create I mean, a feeling of security for you? Yeah, yeah. That no matter who we are, we can still, yeah, count on that being there yeah and also a desire to obey probably if you can see okay god is in control god's got this i can mm -hmm. trust and obey mm -hmm. the systems maybe that's mm -hmm. where because i'm not very obedient i am yeah. <laughs> yeah okay thank you that's that's a beautiful perspective and virginia i really liked reading that because it does make you it gives you some comfort yeah okay and i don't love the word obey <laughs> but it makes me feel that i i need to um if i can build my desire to have that trust okay. and faith okay. then i'll be able to surrender to it because it's already laid out for you it's there it's all there okay it's all, and it's all created from love it's all loving Right. It's just the resistance because we don't have the faith. Yeah. Well, it's what Michael said earlier. We have distrust our parents. Right from the get-go, we distrust our parents. And that's something to work through. And therefore, we distrust God. Uh, but then reading all of these books, uh, all these chapters, we're kind of going, you can trust God. God's got this. And God's intention is to love and to give. So, hmm. It's a discrepancy happening there. We can see our the gap between what we feel and what the reality is and how to meet that gap or close the gap. 
And Jaya, maybe that's a good question to do um, channeling on, to ask yeah. God and your guides, how can I develop trust in what God has set up for me? Teach me how to trust. How can I trust? Um, maybe ask and then develop maybe four or five questions, you know, and then go for it and see what you get. Because that's a good that's a good set of questions to ask about and to feel about. Yeah. Okay. Um, this has oh Michael, did you have a yeah? Just I had two more thoughts about perfection. Sure. I think of I have thought of perfection as being complete, like okay. you can't do any better than this. Okay. But we are God's perfect creation, yet growth and change is part of yes. this model of perfection. So nothing really stands still. So, um, so it's dynamic. Perfection has this, in, in God's creation, change and dynamicism is part of perfection. Yeah, and also that we we are perfect, but so we have this mud on us, but we're still perfect. So the Ooh. mud on us doesn't really affect our perfection. Right, it doesn't change the germ, the, the seed. Yeah. Ah, I like that. Ooh, I like that a lot. That is also very faith giving. To, to, if you can really deepen that faith inside of you that this is this is what I'm dealing with, I'm already made perfect. Um, I just got to wash some things off. Then you don't take the personal truth so personally too. You're like, I'm just getting personal truth about mud. Like, come on, like, oh. there's nothing to get hung up about here. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's uh, wow. It looks like our topic today is about faith. <laughs> So it's kind of getting there slowly. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I will stop the recording now.